Welcome, aspiring programmers. Today, I will explain the mysteries of recursive functions. Recursion is one of those concepts that can be very hard to wrap your head around, especially as a beginner. Recursion is basically another way of repeating code. It's a function that calls itself. It's like having a box and inside of it, it's another box and another box and another box, creating a series of interconnected layers. And if we keep opening our boxes, we will eventually get to the smallest one. And that's our base case. We then return the smallest box to the second the smallest, return that one to the next, and so on, until we return them all to the largest box again and get the final result of all the operations. To demonstrate, let's tackle a mathematical problem, a case where recursion is often used, calculating the factorial of a number. The factorial of a number is the result you get from multiplying all the positive numbers up until the given number. For example, factorial of 4 equals 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 24. Calculating a factorial is a naturally recursive process. In fact, it even has a recursive mathematical formula. This can look a bit intimidating if you're not into maths. But the wonderful thing about programming is that if you can program a formula, the computer will do the calculations for you. So what do we have here? The exclamation marks means factorial, so we're looking for the factorial of n, which represents a number. What we have here is a base case, which comes from the fact that the factorial of 0 equals to 1, and the second case is the recursive case. Translating this mathematical formula into a program turns out to be quite easy. We can pretty much just code it up. So fear not as the recursion comes to the rescue. In this code, our factorial function calculates the factorial of a given integer that we call n and returns an integer. In its most basic form, a recursive function contains an if-else statement. The first part of this is a special case that will stop the recursion. This is the base case. So if n equals to 0, return 1. Else we have our recursive case where we multiply the factorial of n minus 1 with n. And we do this inside our return statement by calling our function inside itself and multiplying the result with n. And here's where my head started spinning the first time I stumbled upon recursion. Like, how does this even work? How can we calculate the factorial of a number with a factorial of an other number that we don't even know yet? If we take a closer look, what the function actually does is it takes n minus 1 and returns it multiplied by n. Then it starts over and this process continues until the base case is reached, resulting in the factorial of the input number. To give it a visual, let's add a print statement at the top where we print the value of n every time the function gets called. To test it, we'll write a simple main where we declare an integer to hold the number we want to calculate the factorial of and another one to hold the result. We call our function with the number 4 as an argument and we then print the result using printf. So let's compile and run it. So we compile it with cc, and then we write a out, which is our program name, and there we have it. So we're only calling our function once in main, but since the function is calling itself, it gets called five times, and each time n is decreased by one until our base case is reached, and the function stops calling itself, and the final result is 24 which it should be. Okay, so I get that the number gets smaller each function call, but if it returns 1, why does it still print 24? Like, why does it work and how? Let me try to break it down further. First, we start with a number we want to find a factorial of. Then we take away 1 from that number and solve the smaller problem of finding the factorial of that reduced number. We keep doing this until we get to 0. Once we hit 0, we know the factorial is 1. So the bottom function in this change returns 1, but since it's called itself, it returns it to itself in the previous function call, and now it performs the multiplications. So we start multiplying our way back up, combining the results of each step until we get the final factorial value. So it kind of spirals upwards through all the previous return statements, accumulating calculations. So the second to last returns 1, the third to last returns 2, the next 6, and finally 24 gets returned to our main function. Now, let's address a common question. Why use recursion where we could just achieve the same result using a loop? To illustrate the difference, let's consider solving the same problem, but this time we'll use a while loop. We will declare two integers, one to hold the result and one counter. We'll call them result 
and i. We set them both to start at 1. A loop condition will be, well, i smaller than or equal to n, which is our input number. We then take the result and we multiply it by i. And I also put in a print statement here, so we print the value of i and result. So we see what's going on. We then increment the counter with i++ and return the result. We'll use the same main function as before, but we will add our new function so that we can compare them. In this main function, we have two print statements. First one will give us the factorial using recursion, and the second one using a loop. So let's compile and run it. Here we see the result. So the top one is from recursion that we saw before. The bottom one is using a loop. And here I printed both i and result so that we can see uh, how it goes through it. So the difference between the two is basically that the recursive one, it goes from the back, so it's 43210, while the loop one increments from 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll see that both functions get the same result. The difference is that the recursive function counts backwards and the loop in this case counts upwards. So when should you choose recursion over loops? Well, both approaches will give you the same result. Recursion can provide a simple solution for certain problems, like this one. The recursive code is much shorter and you don't have to rethink the math formula. You can just apply it. Loops are often more efficient and straightforward for repetitive tasks like iterating through arrays or performing simple calculations. Every problem that can be solved recursively can also be solved using loops. In most cases, it's basically a matter of taste. You do you. And there we have it, an introduction to recursion in C. Recursion is one concept out of many and is one way of solving problems. You don't necessarily have to use recursion, but it's always good to have as many tools in your toolkit as possible because they might come in handy. Remember, practice makes perfect, so don't hesitate to experiment with recursion in your own coding project. Thanks for joining us on this coding journey. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your fellow coding enthusiasts. Until next time, happy coding.